Hi, today we've got the Infrared P2 Pro thermal camera to take a look at. So here it is along with the optional macro lens that you can get for it and as you can see it's extremely compact in its design. So if we take a look at the measurements here we're talking about 28 millimeters long, about 18 millimeters wide and then just nine millimeters tall. So very, very compact with really decent specifications here. So this one is 256 by 192 pixels with a refresh rate of 25 hertz. So pretty much as good as any of the other thermal cameras we've looked at on this channel. Yeah, it's in this massively compact case and the temperature range that it can sense is minus 20 all the way up to 550 degrees C. So that's pretty much gonna be ideal for every application. And then with the macro lens, we can look at PCBs, and we'll look at that shortly. Uh, and you can actually see components down to 0201 size in decent resolution. Now, this also comes with an extension lead, as I mentioned. So although this is designed to plug directly into your smartphone, it's got a USB-C connector here. You can also use it with the supplied extension lead, so that if you want to look inside a panel or somewhere out of the way, or even if you want to set this up somewhere, on a little stand and then view what's going on on your mobile phone, you can do that with that USB-C extension cable. To use the thermal camera, we do need to install an app from the Play Store. It's the P2 Pro app. Once you install it, plugging in the thermal camera will start the app, or if it's already started, uh, then it will just allow us to view the thermal image. So you can see it's detected the camera, and then we get our thermal image here. And we're just looking at the LoRa PCB here. Now, one thing you'll notice is without the macro lens, things start to get a little bit blurry as we get closer to the PCB. It looks like really for things to be in focus, you want to be about 30 centimeters away or more. But because we've got a decent resolution, you can still actually see a lot of detail on the PCB, even from that extended distance. Uh, we've got various options on the user interface. So we've got the palette. Uh, so you can choose the different color schemes. I think most people are going to use just the normal iron red. We can take photos, and when you press the uh, button there, it will take a photo of it. We can also do videos, and so this will start recording now. It does seem to affect the refresh rate a little bit on my phone, but certainly maybe on a more powerful phone, we won't see that effect. But you can see the refresh rate is definitely that nice 25 hertz, very, very smooth. Every few seconds, we will get a brief pause as it does the thermal calibration but uh, everything looks really nice in terms of image quality. Now, in terms of other things on the user interface, we are able to see temperature at the moment. You can see there's nothing that indicates what the actual temperatures are of items. So we've got a scale that we can enable. Uh, it's saying the hottest thing here is about 31.5 degrees. But if we want to look at the temperature of specific objects, you can pick point there and then you can click on the image on certain areas. It will say there, look like 31.5 here. We can add multiple points and it will give us those three temperatures on the side there. We can get rid of those and instead, if we're only interested in a certain area of the image, we can draw a box and it will tell us the average, the maximum and the minimum temperature in that box. And we can also look at the temperature along a line. So here it's saying Average is 27.6 with a maximum 29, minimum of 26.6. So those are fairly standard features. I think we see those on most thermal cameras that use the mobile phone. There's also another menu that you just saw there. So image flip, especially if you're using the extension cable, you might want to flip the image around. So this allows you to rotate the image so that it's in the correct orientation for the camera that you've got. Um, then we've got other options like variable correction, so we can change the emissivity. Now they've actually got presets in here, so rather than trying to look up the table, if you know you're gonna be looking at some water or some glass, you can just pick that option and it'll automatically uh, choose the correct emissivity for that. It's also got some basic um, object distance here to try and improve the focus and also set the ambient temperature. And then we've got a mode, so high image quality. This limits the maximum temperature range but gives you a much better image. You can pick the wide range and that's the one that allows you to uh, view from minus 20 all the way up to 550 degrees C. But the image becomes a little bit more grainy here. So for most instances, you're gonna to wanna to use that high image quality. You can set it to auto 
and then it, if it goes outside of that range, it'll automatically switch modes. And then the other thing is the image settings. We've just got the brightness and contrast. So that's pretty much all of the settings to do with the user interface. You can enable the camera on your phone at the same time, and it will show it up here. But as you can see, they're not really aligned, so it doesn't make too much sense in terms of uh, anything other than trying to understand what it is that you recorded and what you were looking at at the time of the video. To use the macro lens, you simply attach it to the front of the thermal camera and then it sticks there magnetically. You can remove the lens cover and then we should be able to look at this PCB in a little bit more detail. With the macro lens attached, the depth of field is extremely shallow, so most things are going to be out of focus until you get the distance between the object and the camera absolutely right, which looks to be about 35 millimeters or so. And then, as you can see on this PCB, we can see all of these components in detail very well. So these are 0402s on here, uh, but you can see the pins on the USB-C connector there in detail. So, as you can see, this is ideal for PCB inspection. Now, I will say it's extremely difficult to keep this uh, the correct distance by hand, so you might want to set this up on some kind of rig if you're trying to do a proper PCB inspection. But you can quickly go around the board and look for a hot component that might be shorted out or something like that with a lot of ease with this type of setup. It works very well. And especially if you're going to be using this for electronics, this macro lens, I think, is an essential add-on to the camera. So that's the Infrared P2 Pro, and as far as I can tell, this is the lightest and smallest thermal camera with these specifications on the market. It's really quite an impressive device. Uh, now, obviously, if you don't want it to be attached to your mobile phone, then you tend to have to get something more like one of these Uni-T thermal cameras or something like this, but these are way more bulky, and it is a little bit more limiting in terms of the user interface. So the ability to use your mobile phone with its really powerful processor and the touchscreen and everything is a bit of a benefit there. Uh, for many applications. So if you are in the market for a thermal camera, this is definitely one that you should consider. And I'll put some links in the description down below if you are interested in taking a look at it. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.